According to a source, they were meeting late into the night in the halls of Burbank. The Walt Disney Company is stressed to the max when it comes to the Indiana Jones Dial of Destiny film. This is not going the way that they wished. They were hoping that the walk-up traffic would break in their favor on that preview night. They were hoping that this weekend would look good. But according to other sources, no, the internal projections are not positive for this film. And now it is a blame game. The race is on for who will take the blame for this film's failure. And Kathleen Kennedy's career is at stake. And we have names to name in this one. All right, folks, welcome back. It is a big, big video here on the WDW Pro channel. You are forgiven if you have the little boy who cried wolf syndrome out there. You've heard this so many times that you are sort of numb to the idea that Kathleen Kennedy could leave. And yet here we are, here we are reporting truthfully as best we can from sources that we believe have sincere and terrific credibility. We're going to be telling you about how things have dropped to a dire place with the Indiana Jones franchise, with Lucasfilm, with Kathleen Kennedy. And we are ready to tell you the people behind the scenes at Disney who seem intent on making a change despite how messy that may be. We're going to bring it to you as honestly as we can on a topic that has been beaten and beaten and beaten before, and yet we are here to do it once more. This time, we think that there is something really to it. As a, uh, as a precursor to this discussion, please note that up until about a month ago, I had never said in the last five, six, seven years of my reporting that Kathleen Kennedy was exiting Lucasfilm. A month ago, that changed. Sources began to tell me that that was a shifting situation. We now believe that she is rene renegotiating her contract in August. We also believe that her contract could end next year, and we think that could be expedited. We'll talk about it all. As we do, folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Joining us is mainstream media enthusiast and now part of their cabal, Valiant Renegade. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. We'll see if you can make it onto Gutfeld again. Valiant, if you could get us onto uh, primetime cable with this, this particular video, we'll take that as well. We'll be the mainstream if, if we need to be. We'll, we'll hop in there with you. Hold your hand as you walk through that uh, terrible, terrible place that is the uh, intelligentsia. And Jonas J. Campbell, who uh, is his own form of intelligentsia and is the conduit for much of the information we're receiving today, he is the investigative reporter for thatparkplace.com. Jonas, welcome back. Good to be here. And uh, I want to say thank you to my sources out there. You are much appreciated. That's right. And uh, this is going to be some big news. We're not going to sugarcoat this. We're not going to underplay it. We think we have some really big stuff to talk about. As we do so, let's go ahead and hop into now uh, the topic at hand, which is this update on the Thursday night preview for Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. This out of Deadline by Anthony D'Alessandro. Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny rings up $7.2 million Thursday night. Now, that is better than what they were seeing as the lowest possible for Thursday, but it is still nowhere close to good. Here are the two paragraphs we need to read that sort of give us context in the conversation we're about to have. Disney Lucasfilm's Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny came in at $7.2 million in previews Thursday per Disney. We heard last night that the pick was heading for $6 million to $7.5 million. That's where previous older skewing action guy comps live. Unfortunately for Disney, those films seldom have a budget such as this. And that is really what is going on here. This is a film that we believe needs to hit a billion dollars. Let me say it again a billion dollars at the box office worldwide to break even, not to make money, but to break even. Those other films, those other older skewing action guy comps, they don't need anywhere close to that. This one does. Then uh, De Alessandro goes on to say, we're specifically referencing the Thursday night starts of No Time to Die, which grows 6.3 million, goes on to mission, uh, mention Mission Impossible. We discussed some of this in the video that we released earlier today. If you're watching this video at the time of release, However, this update is that we have the exact 7.2 million now, which leads us into the conversation we need to have. All right, things are not going great for Disney. Things are not going great for Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. This could be a film which is on the list, maybe top five, maybe top three, uh, worst box office failures we've ever seen in terms of revenue loss. Jonas J. Campbell, it's time to go to you. You have sources. 
you have some major news and you have names. Share with us, please. Okay. Well, uh, I, I was reached out to by a source that I trust implicitly here um, that uh, Lucasfilm was actually intentionally keeping these projected numbers low because they wanted to exceed expectations. That has obviously not happened. And so now the uh, the executives at Lucasfilm and this 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 note about some chaos at Lucasfilm going on right now, they do seem to confirm that there is something going on out there. But they are describing this as a marketing disaster, not a movie disaster, but a marketing disaster. And that they are trying to spin it to say that we did our job. We delivered you a good movie and Disney marketing didn't do the job of marketing the film appropriately. Now, um, we know from other sources that one, the reviews, generally speaking, on this movie are not very good from people who like movies. And when you have a, a movie like Indiana Jones, uh, unfortunately, there's three fantastic films to compare it to. Uh, we know that the marketing spend on this movie has actually been astronomical. We know that from Polly. Right, right, pause there, Jonas. Describe to us, and, and I guess that's where you were going. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but describe to us. What has made this an astronomical spend on the marketing side of it? Well, there's, there's, first of all, you know, we have this, this silly Applebee's uh, marketing thing that we're talking about, but also that uh, Polly from the Latino Slant, as well as Chris Gore from Film Threat, and Alan Ng also from Film Threat, and Dante from Verbal Riot went to go see a screening of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Generally speaking, there might be some food and there might be some booze. But in this case, they had all of those things, a complete open bar and a fantastic spread for all of these people coming to see the film before the film even started. So they're hoping to get them liquored up and in a great mood before they go in to see this movie. Uh, there's word that all of the premieres across the globe have similar uh, similar spreads. Also uh, from Cannes Film Festival, we know that people stayed out until one or two in the morning partying with executives from Disney and stars of the film and anyone that they could get to uh, hobnob with these reporters and these film reviewers. So they've been working very hard on the marketing of this film. That being said, the word from Burbank is that it was a very late night there and that there are factions forming underneath Alan Bergman and Dana Walden, the head of Disney Studios, to say that there are two factions forming that are fighting over this exact issue, whether it is marketing or whether it is the quality of the film. I think we all and, can judge for ourselves where we fall on that issue. So then let's follow up with that. We'll get Valiant's take on these factions. It is our understanding based on this source and other sources we have that Alan Bergman's camp, they are no fan of Lucasfilm as it is currently constituted. The Bergman camp is not a fan of Kathleen Kennedy and is pushing potentially for Kathleen Kennedy to leave and leave soon. We believe that Dana Walden is potentially in favor of Kennedy staying and in favor of this marketing be damned kind of a, approach where they say it was the commercials. It was the trailers. They did not do a, a good enough job explaining what this film was. Now, this is significant, too, because we also believe at the same time that Dana Walden is the leading candidate for the next CEO position, although there's plenty of time for chaos to ensue and scrap that. So we have uh, we have all of these things moving. Valiant, what do you think and what have you heard about Bergman in the past in terms of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, and what he may be thinking right now? Well, I remember talking, I guess it was two years ago now, the last time Kathy was renewed uh, in the third or early fourth quarter, I guess, uh, of 2021. Um, you know, I've never had inside sources tell me anything about Disney. This was just, you can read the tea leaves. Uh, Alan Bergman is chairman of the Walt Disney Studio system. He's got six plus uh, Disney Studios under his belt. Lucasfilm of them, and not including the ones that they acquired from Fox for a moment, but I'm talking about Walt Disney Animation, Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel. Um, Lucasfilm is the only one out there that has not gotten a single theatrical project into pre-production since 2016 with the rise of Palpatine. That's, that's seven years ago now. And a guy like Alan Bergman, that's got to frustrate immensely. That's the one fail that he's got on his block doesn't matter what they're pumping out for Disney+. Plus. They're supposed to be pumping out theatrical content. And Bob Iger apparently was of the same mindset. Um, so I, I had speculated two years ago. I, I 
sorry, but Alan Bergman cannot be any kind of fan of Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, he would probably love to see her go. All the business metrics pointed to the fact that she should have been released two years ago in 2021. Everything said that she should have gone. They would have found somebody else. No other company would put up with that degree of failure at that point, especially after all the financial and operational mismanagement that she was so famous for with the production of the Star Wars films. They did complete. So now here we are two years later. We're talking about a contract renewal, negotiations for that contract renewal, which would ostensibly come up in 2024 because that would be three years, October 1st of 2024 from the last one, just as they've always been three years. Correct. And the renegotiation starting in August of this year. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Funny how that's going to land about 30 days after the release of Indiana Jones 5, which you've pointed to now for some time is she's going to hang around through Indiana Jones 5. And then that's most likely when the exit process or the retirement process would begin. I think we're right on track for that, especially after we see what the next three to 10 days looks like in the theater for this film. So Valiant, let me follow up with you on this. Kathleen Kennedy now, in my opinion, has struck out in every way possible and, mm -hmm. and in a way that cannot be ignored. Let's go through the last films that she's had. She has had Star Wars or Solo, a Star Wars story. That's a bomb. She's had Rise of Palpatine, which exceeded any reasonable production uh, amount that should have been spent and essentially nullified any money that it made. Now she has Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, which may be in the top three movies of all time in terms of financial loss. That's, mm -hmm. that's cinematic history. We'll see how that plays out before we uh, nail it with the number one spot, but we'll see. And at the same time, too, on streaming, she is devoid of much, much in the way of victories. Willow was just sent packing because it was more valuable to Disney as a tax write-down than as actual streaming content. So, Valiant, you've been paying very close attention and, and garnering uh, a, quite a, a, a bit of attention in the media regarding how much Disney has lost in the last year at the box office alone, how much does this add to the tally with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny if it, if it fails to make half a billion dollars? Where does, this, where does this put us? I mean, we're probably in the range of somewhere we're at another 250 to the figure, I would think, at least at this point. Uh, so, I mean, that's going to put us 1.1, 1.2 billion, somewhere in that neighborhood, perhaps. I mean, we'll have to see what the final numbers really look like. But the movie has a short shelf life with uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning coming out 12 days later uh, or 12 days from now. Um, so that this is, is this is, is probably the most front loaded film we've seen in a long time. Is it fair to say uh, with Indy five? I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, potentially very, very much so. Um, I mean, I, I, I said a few days ago in a video, this is the next flash, I think. Um and, and the other movies that were brought up earlier, there are some distinct differences between those comparing to Indy 5 as well that the article skipped. But I'll talk about more of those later. Um, but it, it, the key for this thing is this has to do well. This has to load the box in the next 12 days. Uh, otherwise, it's got a lot of problems. But this whole issue with Alan Bergman really wanting to push her out the door, uh, trying to get this retirement deal done again. I, I've never been one to say that she was going to be fired. I don't think I've ever said she was going to be fired. In fact, I said she will never be fired. She will be gracefully exited from Lucasfilm with uh, you know all proper legacy due, quote, unquote, position. Respect. Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of the issue. So it's not like they're going to can her the next day, but I think it will not be too long after before we start hearing about. You know, well, she's 70 years old now, and she's going to be looking to moving on to greener pastures. She'll stay in an advisory capacity with Lucasfilm for the next few years. Da -da 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 but basically, she's, you know, there's no reason to keep her there anymore. None. There well, was no reason to keep can't. her in 2021. So, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you can't sustain this. She yeah. is now planning out Star Wars films, and <laughs> they're going to lose like Indy has just lost or is it going yeah. to lose. And, and that's not sustainable at all. Just to be clear, it was December of 2019 when the last Lucasfilm production came out. So that's, uh, we're talking three and a half years. When it came out, I was talking about pre-production. Right. Yeah, I mean, no, like, yeah, yeah I'm not disagreeing with you on the pre-production yeah. pipeline. I, I, yeah. Frankly, as Disney's looking at the losses they're going to suffer with this, they may be saying, well, we wish we could ex extend that out. How about we get six years between these things in the future? Because they're disasters. Jonas, they were meeting late into the night is what we've heard. That sounds to me like a crisis situation. That's not what you do when uh, everything is just business as usual. I think we may get some movement on this in the future. We may not hear about it for another month or so, but uh, 
She has lost Christine McCarthy, the chief financial officer who was a a huge defender of her and held sway in the company. She has lost Ton Newton, who was the chief diversity officer, had immense power, and who was a strong proponent of the things that Kathleen Kennedy has been attempting to do, i.e. inserting strong female characters who are essentially reflections of Kathleen Kennedy in the films. Jonas, explain to me why they would be having meetings late into the night. Do you think that they've hit a crisis point? Uh, I, I think they obviously have. This this movie appears to be a disaster. And 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 by the way, to throw one more figure out there, Rise of Skywalker. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> Rise of Palpatine. Uh, that topped out at uh, one billion at the box office. Uh, and that the, and if this is the minimum threshold that Indiana Jones has to hit, we're talking about a situation in which the entirety of Lucasfilm, the entire destruction of one of the most beloved and profitable film franchises in the world has been given to one person and said, here, just do it on autopilot. And she said, no, let's put a brunette in the lead and make them uh, better than everybody else. I, they're not staying late into the night because they're okay with things. You don't keep executives on a Thursday night late in order to uh, just go through the numbers one more time. Something is going on here. And I don't think, I, like you said, I don't think it's going to be an immediate, like we're going to find out uh, because Kathleen Kennedy is going to uh, be at an Elton John concert or something like that. <laughs> but something is going to be happening here soon. It has to. Otherwise, Bob Iger will have to answer for it at the next shareholders meeting. That's just it. It's rising to the level where you can't, you cannot, you know, hide this anymore from investors. You cannot hide this anymore from the, the media. Can't even cover for this anymore because the chain of failures that Disney has had uh, in the last several months at the box office and elsewhere. Uh, it's just, it's to the point now where there's there's nothing left. There's nothing left. And, They're exposed. You know, yeah. I mean, think about it, Valiant. Just 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 follow up on that point. The Little Mermaid is going to top out at 550. Now you can spin that one, right? You and I know that it needs 800 million to to break even. And so that doesn't work on us. But for the for the mass population out there, you can run happy little stories about how it broke half a billion and, you, and can you can trick people. They don't understand, yeah. right? Because they don't, you know, they don't they've got lives and they don't pay attention to this sort of thing. But then you you really can't spin elemental. And so that has been egg on face, huge embarrassment for the company. Now they've got Indiana Jones. And so what that is doing is it's it's causing the general public that doesn't pay attention, doesn't necessarily understand the numbers because they don't have the time to focus on it. It's giving the general population out there, the general shareholders, et cetera, the ability to easily go, oh my gosh, this is metastasizing all throughout the company. Look at this. Their animation is in the toilet. And now they Indiana Jones is in the toilet. What's going on? That gets people asking questions. Uh, you know, the average Joe out there. Valiant, how significant is this in terms of a cascade now uh, where the company is at large being impacted by these horrendous box office results? Well, at large, I mean, is it going to affect things? You mean like theme parks or whatnot? No, I think they've already got their own problems, but I think I think the impact is going to be felt. We're finally going to, I think, see we have to. And if they don't, this is a dereliction of duty. Somebody on the Q&A session during that earnings call is going to have to finally ask a question about theatrical licensing and distribution well, it's, it's a topic the they value. typically avoid but they so take they it have take to. it in this direction for a moment though mm -hmm. we're looking right now at nintendo based on what we have heard with our sources over in, in the toy industry nintendo is looking to push into the princess genre the princess line of toys because they see weakness in disney and so they're mm -hmm. going to start pushing all of their little princesses into their games and in movies and then push that out as princess lines. You get a princess peach kitchen. You get a princess peach, you know, a set of set of dollies with uh, Daisy and and uh, well, all of the others. But here's the thing: if these movies continue to fail like this, it's wiping out their merchandising abilities too, and then that feeds mm -hmm. all throughout the company. Oh yeah, indeed. Well, I think we're in agreement there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else you want me to say on that one. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no. Uh, hey, Jonas, <laughs> Jonas, give us some final thoughts. This was your source, um, and and of course, I think Valiant and I, and I'm I'm not 100 sure on Valiant, but I know uh, some information about the source. I trust this greatly, and I appreciate you doing the homework uh, and bringing this to the channel. It's an honor to have you do that. But Jonas, give us your final thoughts on this and what it means for the company moving forward. 
I think the the clear indication here is that the downsizing of the Walt Disney Company is continuing, and uh, that that we are nowhere they are nowhere near out of the woods just yet. And we should we should continue looking for what happens here at Lucasfilm and also uh, Pixar. We see we see everyone else getting squeezed, and uh, so far Lucasfilm has not seen that squeeze. So it's got to happen. They they have made no money other than their. Uh, Industrial Light and Magic and their Skywalker Sound, their strictly film production aspect of their business, they keep losing money. Something has to be done. ESPN is being slashed. National Geographic has been gutted, an American institution. They have not touched Lucasfilm, you're right. And I have a theory on that. I'll, I'll say that and we'll end this video there. But my theory on that is you don't cut down to the marrow of an institution until you have a leader that will help you do so. Now, I think that perhaps we're waiting to see the head of the snake leave before they begin to dissect the parts that, that were not working. Once Kathleen Kennedy exits, perhaps in a way that makes it seem to the public like she went up the ladder, but we'll know the truth. But until she exits, I don't think they're going to touch Lucasfilm. But I think that that is going to be expedited greatly if this rumor is correct. Folks, we cannot independently verify it we do, not, uh, we do not walk the halls of Burbank here at uh, this channel or on these other channels. We can only go on what our sources tell us. Check out our track record and see if you uh, wish to believe. Valiant, where can people find you on this great, big, beautiful web out there? You can find me on YouTube at Valiant Renegade and on Twitter as the same. And Jonas, where can we find you? You can find me at That Park Place and also on the Pro Show, uh, Thursdays 5 to 7, or our My Own Channel, where I like to go through everything woke about children's entertainment. Folks, we hope you like content like this. If you do, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell. If you want more exclusive content such as this, consider clicking that little join button and becoming a member of the channel. It's the price of a soda per month, and you'll gain access to all kinds of extras. And we are waiting to see what happens. We do not have concrete evidence yet that Kathleen Kennedy is gone. But there is smoke. There is growing billows of smoke. And don't be surprised, folks, if in a month, two months, things are beginning to happen at a rapid pace. This cannot continue. But what can continue is that all of you out there should be continuing to have fun, to learn, to grow. And you know what? Maybe one day we'll make our own Indiana Jones movies, Star Wars movies, and content that's better than what we're getting out of one Kathleen Kennedy. I just found out how to get WDW Pro's information. Where he gets his sources. I can't believe he uses it. Wilton! Wilton! Listen. We, we got a job to do. We're, uh, it's, it's easy to hack into WDW Pro's uh, computer. They're kidding me. That's awesome. You know any other stuff? Yeah, just uh, jo Jonas Campbell told me. Sweet. Said Pro underpaid him or something. A few minutes later. <laughs> This thing. It's, it's gonna be so easy. Yeah, this isn't All right, heck. And, uh, grab this uh, picture over here. Leave it to me. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, Wilson. Job done. Uh, what? No, all we had to do was use the picture because he uses face unlock. Now we gotta go to thatparplace.com and sub to him and his team on YouTube. Oh, well, I already did that because I'm smart. Yeah.